gentleman has moved. The gentleman from Jefferson has moved. The House refused to adopt conference committee report. The Senate committee substitute. House committee substitute. House bill eight and request the Senate grant further conference thereon and that the House confers be bound to the House position with regard to sections 8.040 and 8.045 with regards to the Cyber Crime Investigation Fund discussion. Gentleman from Jefferson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, if I can have five members standing, I would request a roll call on this motion. You do have five standing. You will get a roll call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Internet Cyber Crimes Grant has been an incredible success story in this state. Uh, it has led to the prosecution of some of the most dangerous sexual predators uh, that are loose in our society uh, and more specifically loose in our, our Internet, uh, a portal uh, for, uh, for children uh, to be exposed to uh, some incredible grave uh, offenses. Uh, these often lead to uh, what, what law enforcement calls rendezvous where, where the, uh, the, the child is, uh, is uh, enticed uh, to meet someone that very often is misrepresenting their age or their intentions, uh, resulting in, uh, in statutory rape. I won't go into all the details because we've got uh, some kids in the building, but some heinous, heinous crimes. Uh, there's not much stuff, Mr. Speaker. Uh, not too many programs that we've gotten the bang for our buck that we have from uh, the million dollars, and, and I'll say mere million dollars. I don't like to say that, but uh, that's less than we probably spend on paper clips in, uh, in, our, in our state government, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we can't take the chance that the Burn JAG grants, uh, that we're not going to get timely application or that this isn't going to be an acceptable purpose under whatever rules are promulgated, uh, we we need to make sure that we have this line item 8.040. So there's so it's not just hollow funding uh, where we're saying there's a million dollars available for for uh, task forces, but we don't have any money in the grant fund, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I'll I'll tell you what we we love to say we're tough on crime. We love to pass bills every year, Mr. Speaker, that send these these uh, purveyors of pornography and these sexual predators to jail for a longer period of time. And here. Here we're, we're taking the chance that we're not going to be able to, to identify those folks and prosecute them, and I think it's, it's just crazy for the couple minutes it would take the conferees to go back to conference, put this line back in. If we do get federal money, we can let this uh, appropriations lapse and just use those federal dollars. Uh, and I don't at all hold the budget chairman responsible. Uh, I think his intentions were pure. He believed that there was going to be federal money out there. But that is certainly in question in the minds of the task force officers I've talked to. Uh, I hope anyone that calls himself tough on crime or tech, tough on sex crimes doesn't mind seeing a mailer show up in the mailboxes of their constituents uh, at, around election time that says that they voted against this if, uh, if we don't put our money where our mouths is, a mere million dollars to make sure that these dangerous, dangerous criminals are removed from the streets and removed and put out of reach uh, of our most vulnerable citizens, our children, Mr. Speaker. With that, I'd be glad to take any questions, and I renew my motion. Further discussion on the moment. Gentleman from Jasper, raising your eyes. Speak on the substitute motion, Mr. Speaker. Proceed, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, our budget chairman and vice chair and the rest of the members of the budget committee have an extremely difficult task that we delegate to them each and every year. Uh, they work countless hours, having served on budget for six years and been on conference committee for five of those six years. I know how much time and effort goes into it. Uh, I was not on budget this year. I was not on conference committee. But I can tell you that our budget chairman has worked extremely hard on the budget ever since he's come to this body and I think that we need to respect his leadership and I would urge the body to defeat the substitute motion. Discussion further? Gentleman from Buchanan. What reason do you rise? Speak on the motion. The Proceed amendment. gentlemen. Mr. Speaker, I agree a lot with what the last speaker just said. I've also served for years on the budget committee. And during our hard work this year on the budget committee, we actually had the money in the budget for the Cybercrime Task Force. Over the past few years, I've also served on the conference committee on House Bill Number 8. 
This year I wasn't on the conference committee, Mr. Speaker, and I don't know what happened. I don't know how this money got out of the budget, but our budget, most of our work in the budget committee and in conference in here is setting priorities. And I think our children of this state should be our number one priority, not just their education, but their safety as well. And if you look at the track record of our cyber crime task forces across the state, you'll see we're not talking about arrests and convictions of five people or ten people or 25 people a year. We're talking about convictions in the hundreds and the thousands. That's how many people there are out there who are predators to these children. I'm trying to choose my words very carefully, as you can tell, Mr. Speaker. I am emotional about this issue, but due to our audience, I'm trying to be careful, but I still want to impress. We're talking about the safety of our children. We're talking about the lives they live and their quality of life. We're talking about some very, very the scum of society, the very worst people that can be there. We've been taking them off the streets for the past few years, and I want to continue to take them off the streets. Therefore, I want to urge my colleagues, it's time to rethink. It's time to take care of this important priority and send this bill back to conference and get that $1 million put back in for the cyber crime task force. Thank you. Further discussion on the amendment, on the substitute amendment? Seeing none, or gentlemen from St. Louis County, what reason do you rise? To inquire the gentleman from Jefferson. Gentlemen, you yield. Proceed, gentlemen. Thank you. Actually, you have House Bill 21 over there. Thank you. Again, and I think we all agree the efficacy of the program, the necessity of the program, and we're actually trying to run down the language in ARRA so that, again, because that was the basis that the Congress Committee went on, and obviously if that was not the case, I think clearly we would have taken either a House position or a Senate position to fund this program. Is there anything that would lead you to believe that the state would not receive those funds? Yeah. First of all, we just don't know. I mean, we never know what funds are going to come down, and we never know what allowable uses are going to be attached to those funds. A lot of times those funds are not, if they're for personnel, and you know this as a budget chair, you've dealt with these. If they're for personnel, they have to be a multi-jurisdictional task force. They generally have to be new officers assigned to that task force. We're talking about continuing funding for the officers we've already put in place, and the local law enforcement agencies in these task forces are already making a considerable investment and can't keep these task forces operating at the level they're at without the money that we've appropriated the past two years. Do you know, gentlemen, and you're more familiar with the process, because this is actually a little different than the burn grants. That's administered through the Sheriff's Association, and I guess the headquarters for this whole process is in Cape Girardeau. Right. When we passed the enabling legislation a couple years ago, we did put together a board or commission that, if I recall correctly, that divvied out the money based on the evidence of need, I guess, that was demonstrated by the task forces. Okay. And is this operating on a similar basis as far as a centralized task force? It's very similar to the model that we use for narcotics task forces. They're multi-jurisdictional, that they cross jurisdictional lines, because, you know, Internet crimes obviously is not a crime that, you know, you can start and finish an investigation within the boundaries of a municipality or county. These are interstate, intrastate if not interstate crimes. Thank you.